think I can wing the first part. Usually what we do is we start off by saying we have to call this meeting to order. Second thing we do is rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Look at that, I got it, I got it right. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Secretary, will please note the roll. And we're going to move on to our next item, which is a seating of our new board members. So, if this is all sorted out correctly, and you're going to have to, somebody's going to have to say if we can hear me all right. I hear you. Everybody can please mute during this part. Okay. 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 All right. Would you, would you, I'm going to raise your right hand. And here's my right hand, you said? Left. Yep. Oh, right. You got it right. You can carry me There you are. Thank you. Okay. Please repeat after me. I. I, J, I, J, Strunk, do solemnly swear, or do solemnly swear, or affirm, do solemnly affirm, that I will support, that obey, I will support, and defend, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth, and that I will discharge the duties, and I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity, of my office with fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And welcome to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that was the only painless thing you'll do. That's right. I had a whole lot of Thank you for coming, everybody. You certainly may. We're just going to take a picture with my family's here. So I'm going to leave his camera here, and I'm going to take myself to the other room. All right. Mr. Vice, would you take over for this part of the meeting for me? All right. My volume is back on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Very good. While he's finishing finishing up some photographs and getting everything sorted, we can move on to the next bit. Um, a virtual executive session occurred this evening, just before this meeting, uh, at 6:30 to discuss personnel and potential litigation. So we concluded that and move directly into the, uh, the meeting. So now we're going to move into public comment. We're going to continue public comment the way we've been doing it the last few meetings, similar to how we did it before. Uh, and that is that we're going to have uh, members of the administration available to respond to questions and uh, Q&A from the audience in the written format. And we will allow, as per usual, public comment on microphone that will be moderated by our secretary, Mrs. Custer. 
So she'll be working with in tandem uh, to get the comments on and off mic and she'll announce you as you come in, announce you as you come out. Basically, please do say your name and where you live and then we'll have two minutes basically uh, to give your statement and then we'll recognize the next person. Okay, right now we have uh, one person with their hand raised. Uh -huh. uh, and that is Stacy Messing. I'm going to unmute you right now, Stacy. You have two minutes. Okay, hi. Um, 1979 Summit Way. Um, I just wanted to, I don't know exactly what's going to be discussed down at 10 point something with the virtual, with the Western Center, but I just wanted to um, say that uh, I heard some quip and reactive comments made following the vote returning to school virtually two weeks ago um, regarding um, returning live to the Western Center and considering students with IEPs returning live to the district. Comments such as, I guess Western Center isn't safe and the students with IEPs can't return because we're saying it isn't safe. Um, and I just hope that those comments were rethought and that serious consideration had been given to allowing the return to uh, the Western Center Live, as well as any kids with special needs that felt like they needed to be in school. Um, the, these two situations are certainly different circumstances than having um, the district return even in a hybrid model. Um, and besides the unique needs of the students that are both attending the Western Center and have IEPs and special needs, um, many board members and Dr. Shirk had previously commented on more than one occasion that the Western Center is especially equipped to handle distancing and safety in these times due to the size of their building and their size of their rooms and the uh, low number of students. So um, I, I really hope that in light of us not going back virtually as, I mean, not going back live as a district, that serious consideration uh, has been given to these circumstances um, and considered um, completely. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Stacy. Our next will be Jerry Thompson. All right, can you hear me okay now? There, I think you're all right. Okay, am I okay? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Jerry Thompson, 253 Glendale in Upper Potts Grove. Uh, good evening, everybody. As most are aware, the primary governing body of secondary school sports throughout Pennsylvania, PIAA, was blindsided by an offhand remark made by Governor Wolf last Thursday which reflected his opinion about whether athletic events in Pennsylvania should occur throughout the remainder of the calendar year. PIAA and member schools were understandably frustrated after having spent months diligently preparing for fall sports to be played with CDC and state-supported health and safety protocols in place. Governor Wolf's casual about face essentially served two purposes, to completely disrupt the previously supported planning process being undertaken by hundreds of school districts and to abruptly throw the hopes and excited anticipation of thousands of young athletes into a state of uncertainty and skepticism about the possibility of being able to participate in the sports they love. This is not my opinion, this is reality. Here is a fact, PIAA chose to avoid an impulsive response to Governor Wolf's irresponsible comments and instead announced plans to meet with state officials to garner support for continuing implementation of their comprehensive plan to provide kids with interscholastic athletic opportunities. For this reason, a school board decision to cancel Potts Grove athletic events at this point in time would be premature and simply unnecessary. Additionally, a school board decision to cancel sports at this point in time would disregard the important distinction between educational issues, which impact the entire student body, and extracurricular matters, which involve only a portion of the student body. Here is that distinction. Attending school is mandatory for all students. Involvement in sports is voluntary. Hence, the numerous student athletes and parents who remain comfortable participating in interscholastic athletics essentially stand as one on this matter. 
that constitute a unanimous vote that cannot in good conscience be ignored. I assure you that I speak tonight not only on behalf of my three sons, all proud Pottsgrove student athletes, but also on behalf of a vast number of Pottsgrove student athletes and their parents who feel that these kids deserve to play the sports they love in an environment where exhaustive measures have been taken to greatly minimize health risks. They at least deserve an opportunity to await the outcome of pending decisions from PIAA. If you as board members truly serve to represent the residents of this community, then please acknowledge that on this issue, the community of Pottsgrove citizens we represent are essentially the families of student athletes. And as guidance and direction from PIAA are awaited, I respectfully implore each of you to do the right thing. I implore you to do nothing. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I don't see anybody else. Oh, there we go. Uh, that was the only other hand raised. So I think we are, if anyone else wants to speak, raise your hand now. Okay, that was it. Very good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We'll move on to the approval of the minutes or the next make, a, bit. make a motion to combine 5.1 to 5.4. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve all of the minutes 5.1 to 5.4. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the motion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed say no. motion order without objection thank you i move that we accept the high school middle school and cafeteria counts for june and july 2020 as presented so moved would that be a second second, second. we have a, we have a motion and a second a uh, motion from mr Graham, a second from Ms. custer to uh receive the accounts and approve them so does anybody have any questions on these? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. A order without objection. I move that we ratify payments of invoices in the amount of six million nine hundred thirty-seven dollars five hundred and seventy-one and fifty-three cents. Second. Thank you, Ashley. Very good. Is that, I'm sorry, I can't see if that's for July or June or both. Oh, this, I'm sorry, this is for June 2020. Okay, very good. We have a motion and a second to grant the orders for June of 2020. Uh, and a second, does anybody have any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So order without objection. I move that we approve the payments of invoices in the amount of $3,103,986.61 for July 2020 as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to grant the orders and make the payments for the invoices for July of 2020. Does anybody have any questions on these? Or comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So ordered without objection. I move that we approve the treasurer's report for June and July 2020 as presented and file it for audit. Second. Thank you, Ashley. We have a motion and a second that we receive the treasurer's report for approval. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye and file it for audit. Very good. Dr. Shirk? We're going to move on to the uh, report of the superintendent and the student board report. Uh, we're going to ask Madison to uh, please uh, weigh in uh, for uh, this first uh, August meeting. Madison? 
Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to start off by thanking each and every one of the board members. You all work incredibly hard and diligently to put the well-being of the staff, students, parents, and community first. Each and every one of you serves the position. Regardless of the disagreements among, among you guys, you all have an objective to educate and inspire all students to excel as productive, responsible citizens, lifelong learners. Early last week, I posted on social media accounts asking students from the hospital community please feel free to share their thoughts, concerns, and or comments about the school year beginning virtually. I also added that their feedback perspective for the board coming directly from the students rather than from their parents. Their feedback would also be incorporated into this, in this report some way, so all points of view should and would be heard. I made sure to make clear that the board's decision from last Tuesday was a final decision and that their feedback was only going to shine light onto their perspective. But that being said, there was a good turnout with many different things said. This is all a reflection of the posture of students and not just one grade level. I received several responses from various students throughout the week. There was more than one or two points of view and below I've listed some of the opinions of the students that participated. Virtual Academy may be difficult for some students as navigating it last spring was hard for me. Acknowledgement of the struggle of the students to learn, but it was a safe decision. A good decision on behalf of the board. We do not want anything to happen to our peers and mourn over the loss of them. It was a respectful decision, even though the students still represent their case as quote unquote annoyed and or upset. A petition to persuade the board on their decision, and as I stated earlier, I told the students that the decision was final, but it was okay to express their extensive emotions and sadness entering their year without seeing their staff and peers. I hope this way of gathering input was helpful to all of you to gain perspective, but also um, that the students participated found um, gratification from this. It was all reassuring to them to know that they were being listened to and that their opinions would be uh, valid with zero input and or judgment on my part. Thank you all for all the diligence you guys are putting in during this time. Madison, thank you very much for uh, your work and, and your insight. I think it's very, um, it's, it's very important for us to, to uh, obviously get all sides and represent all members of our community, our school community. So I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to work with our students on this and look forward to more information like that in the future. At this time, we'd like to move forward with some discussion items tonight. We have three discussion items, 10-1, 10-2, and 10-3. Uh, the first one, 10-1, uh, is a timeline to transition uh, back to school. Uh, and I just wanted to, uh, to, to share some information with the board and the public tonight. Uh, and then we can uh, have discussion on, on this particular topic. Uh, you know, following the action that occurred during the August 4th, uh, 2020, virtual special board meeting. I just wanted to follow up with some specific recommendations of how we can accomplish our next steps. The goal is to outline how and when we will discuss and make future decisions regarding if and when we return to in-school instruction. The discussion at the meeting noted the district will operate in the virtual academy through the first marking period. In reviewing the board approval for the 2020 calendar, the first marking period ends November 4th of 2020. However, as you know, the elementary division follows a tri-semester system with the first tri-semester ending on December 2nd. Therefore, I'm recommending the following steps. Continually monitor and evaluate the progression of our Potsgrove School District Versal Academy throughout the fall. Review updated COVID-19 data and ongoing guidance received from health advisories, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Determine Pottsgrove School District readiness for a hybrid program throughout the fall based on this updated guidance. Make decisions about whether to continue virtually or transition to offering both the Pottsgrove School District Virtual Academy and the hybrid model by November 4th of 2020. Provide an agenda item on the November 10th, 2020 board meeting to take action on our next steps. If a decision is made to offer both the Potsgrove School District Virtual Academy and the hybrid model, we would, that change would occur on December 1st of 2020. Also within my recommendation for our next steps, 
Starting August 31st, our first day of school, I want to make it optional for teachers to teach from their rooms. If they want to use materials and resources or need connectivity, they can teach from their classrooms. The district also reserves the right to assign teachers to teach in their assigned buildings as deemed necessary. The time, this timeline will allow the district to communicate any changes prior to the Thanksgiving holiday and provide ample time for families to plan any needed adjustments. At this time, I'd like it, op like it open up to the board floor uh, for discussion regarding this uh, timeline for future decisions. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the timeline? A um, couple things, I guess. Uh, one, uh, myself, I'm open to discussion on an earlier return date. Uh, I was hoping to be able to vote yes at our last meeting uh, to offer the hybrid option, but was unable to because uh, we couldn't have a guarantee with things being in place. So uh, if there was others, um, you know, opening, um, uh, desiring to review this earlier, I would be open to that discussion. Hearing no other comments in regards to that, uh, I would just add to you. Bill, Bill, go ahead, Al. Go ahead, Al. I'm on opening now. I will definitely root for it to be earlier. I don't know if it has to be the first marking period to be, you know, consistent with our teaching and such. But if we're able to open October 1st, I'm all for it. I assume that, um, you know, if things progress in, in a much better way than we've seen over the last like four months, that the administration will definitely, uh, bring that to our attention and um we could have a discussion earlier i'm sure uh, i i would assume we all want to get the kids back into school as, as soon as it's um safe for them to be there so that's just my assumption i'm sure we'll be kept in the loop i too i I'm excited for the kids to be back to school, but it has to be on a, uh, we have to be prepared and have everything lined up and have the teachers on board, have every bit, every piece of that puzzle on board to start off in a positive direction. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you too. Can I suggest then that this be kept on the agenda as an open item that we, it be reviewed at each board meeting until we're, we're back to at least the hybrid model? to get an update where we're at? I think we can certainly get an update. I don't want to revisit the decision each and every two weeks. I, I think that makes it very, very hard for the administration to make a plan if we're revisiting the decision every two weeks. I mean, we, we, we can, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm one voice. Let's, what are the, what are the other, what are the other members of the board think? I just think we will get updated when it's needed. I don't think we need to get updated every two weeks. I mean, we're smart people who follow the news, you know, we follow the current events. We too will have a feel for when, you know, uh, when the tides are changing, hopefully in, in the favor of, reopening even if that would be sooner rather than later which we really hope it is yeah i trust the administration to give us uh if 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 things improve dramatically they would probably tell us in advance the uh, end of the first marking period is kind of a uh, deadline so that if nothing has happened we know there will be a period where we can revisit the situation and look at things. What, what exactly, and I'm just asking for clarification for my own application, what exactly do you mean by if the situation is improving drastically? Oh 
good Lord. Uh, if you want the, uh, the uh, I, you're asking me a question off the top of what, my head. What is the situation in Lower Potts Grove? What is the situation in the Potts Groves that is the bad situation that needs to improve drastically to change the decision to have the, the school virtual? What is the bad situation that needs to change? Well, I, I don't know that, I mean, obviously things in this immediate area aren't too bad right now, um, you know, but we've seen hot spots pop up all over the place and we don't know what we're gonna be looking at tomorrow, next week, next month. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I think what we're, what we're saying is that if, if there is a change uh, for the worse or for the better, we're, we're gonna be alerted and, and we're probably already gonna know because we're going to be following right along with it. That's just my thought. Um, okay, Dr. I, don't need, I don't think we need to get a, an update every two weeks. Well, but we're going to be we're together going to every updated on this stuff anyway. Typically have board meetings every two weeks. That's, that's where that right. came from. That's what right. I was saying. I, I completely understand. I'm just saying we get updated on a regular basis on, on many things. We will mm -hmm. not be in the dark about this without a doubt. I think that's true. Bob, the only thing I'd like to say in regards to going back, obviously, like I said, you know, I want to go back. However, if I don't believe it's a flip the switch type of go back, I believe once we start virtual, you're going to have to stay virtual for a time period. And even when the board does make the decision to say, okay, things are looking promising, we want to go back, you're probably going to be at least, I would say, 30 days, probably, or close to 30 days, maybe to say and reorganize which parents are coming in, get the busing ready, getting our furloughed employees back. And it's gonna be more of a process than we could switch the switch and boom, we're back next week. Exactly so, that's that's why we're, we're the suggested timeline I think was talking about the end of the first marking period, the November 4th, November 10th, December 1st for the start. It's kind of a, a known thing we can move around and it would take something fairly dramatic to bring it forward from November 10th to somewhere else. But Dr. Shirk, can you can we get your opinion on this real quick? Would you please weigh in for this? Yeah. Thanks, Ms. Linga. I just wanted to, 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 to share with the board and the community that yesterday the, uh, the PA Department of Health and PDE issued, issued new guidance, a new guidance system. This system will use metrics, number of cases that and test positivity rate to design designated for each county as having low, moderate, or substantial COVID transmission. Based on the COVID transmission designation, the Department of Health and PDE will recommend, will recommend not order the type of instruction schools should be providing. Low transmission, face-to-face -face or hybrid. Moderate transmission, hybrid or all virtual. Substantial transmission, all virtual. So uh, this occurred yesterday. And um, our, our, our designation uh, for Montgomery County for the last two weeks has been moderate. So under moderate transmission, we can be hybrid or all virtual. Obviously as a board, we voted all virtual. So we will use this information that we will get weekly. Uh, I will share this with the board weekly and we'll continue to see this progress. If we if we see low transmission rates where we can go face-to-face -face or hybrid uh, for two weeks or more, we could then transition to the hybrid model and keep this, keep this thing rolling you know, in the right direction. But at least now the state and the Department of Ed have, have given us a metric at least to follow. And as of yesterday, we had nothing. So I think this will be a good tool for us moving forward. And one other side note uh, that we'll also have, we'll also have information uh, from the county on how we're doing in the Potts Groves. So I will be working with uh, Montgomery County IU. So we'll get a specific um, rating, if you will, for lower, upper, and West Potts Grove moving forward. So again, there'll be more data, more specific to us that will help us make better decisions down the road. Thank you, Mr. Lingley. And Dr. Shirk, uh, I know the answer to this, I'm sure, but just for the sake of the community, I mean, we're continuing to move forward with putting the thermal imaging cameras, uh, 
the sanitize sanitization equipment and so forth. So um, we're going to be looking at both sets of data in tandem, I would think, correct? Nothing changes on our end when it comes to the PPE and all the things we're going to do to open up. That, that, will, that will continue to roll out. That will be continue to be put in place uh, so that everything is ready. And uh, I'll also let the board know when those pieces are all in and those pieces are also uh, ready to, to be rolled out and in place. So, um, yeah, we're, we're still, thank you, Mr. Parker. I could just make one last comment. I didn't want to step on anybody talking about the other issue. Uh, part of your recommendation was for the teachers to teach from home. Um, I, I'm trusting that our, you know, education is going to uh, be 110% uh, as our teachers tend to do, um, whether they're choosing to teach from home or in the classroom, if there's resources uh, in their classroom that they're able to get them. Uh, so our students uh, really have a top of the line uh, education uh, this first quarter. Okay, so just summing up that conversation, we we basically have um, what we're going to be looking at is the comfort, the timeline is, as Dr. Shirk has laid out there, where we're going to be looking at virtual basically for the entire first marking period and looking to come back to potentially looking at, and if we do decide to come back as a hybrid, looking at doing that after the Thanksgiving holiday um, around the 1st of December. Uh, uh, the first day of school is going to continue on is August 31st as planned and it will be virtual teachers will have the option to work from home or in their classrooms. We will continue to look at the situation as it warrants and if, if we can move people or, or the situation forward on an accelerated timeline we will do that if and when it presents itself and the board makes its mind known to the, to the superintendent. Did I misstate anything that we had all sort of agreed on? Uh, just, no. just, a com just a quick comment. Hmm? Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, program that came out uh, yesterday, uh, which says that we are in the moderate range, says that our hmm. offerings are more or less in line with what they should be. Uh, you know, we sh we are either uh, a hybrid or or uh, virtual. So I think we're more or less in line with where we should be, with a ho hopefully good chance uh, as the uh, uh, rates continue to drop. Hopefully, we'll uh, move along, maybe earlier, maybe uh, maybe at the end of the marking period. Right. And again, that, that, that information they gave out yesterday was based on the county level, uh, the number of cases that are uh, at the Montgomery County level. And of course, uh, Montgomery County, the cases at the southern end of the county are very different from what we're experiencing here at the northern end of the county. Uh, so when we get it um, refined down to the northern end of the county, we might actually see a different level for our well, end. It's, it's uh, on the uh, state website. You, they also have it broken down by zip code. And uh, I looked at it this morning, and it looked fairly uniform, because uh, if you go north to Lehigh County, uh, they had their own problems. Mm. Very good. All right, Dr. Shirk. Thank you, Mr. Lingren. Just like to move on to 10.2, uh, uh, sports and extracurricular activities. I, I have with us uh, tonight, um, our athletic director, Mr. Uh, Steve Ansbach, and our community relations and co-curricular uh, person, uh, Gary Dorenzo. And I just want to uh, have them uh, basically give an update to the board regarding the current state of PIAA. And then that will really just work itself into, you know, our thoughts and next steps for the uh, Potts Grove community. So Steve, you want to start it out, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh... Yeah, first I want to welcome Mr. Shunk and obviously take this time to thank our board for all your efforts uh, during this challenging time. So one of the things we wanted to do was provide the board with an update of uh, regarding our optional pre-practices, uh, updates to our health and safety plan for athletics and marching band, 
And lastly, uh, provide a timeline of all the recent changes from the state and the PIAA. Um, so, Laura, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. So our optional pre-practice workouts. Um, right now we have cross country, field hockey, football, golf, girls and boys soccer, marching band and volleyball participating in these optional pre-practice workouts. Our total number of uh, participants right now is 130 student athletes and our numbers this week continue to grow. So I would assume that number to be close to 140, 150 by the end of the week. Um, I will say they're going smoothly. Um, I give all the credit to our coaches, our student athletes and our parents. Um, they, you know, all this was everybody needed to have responsibility to make this thing go. And we're entering week four and all of them are, are paying attention to the detail that went into that health and safety plan. And that's why it's running smoothly. Our students and coaches are coming with masks. We have masks available, but we haven't even had to hand anybody, any of them out. Um, our hand sanitizer stations and disinfectant sprayers are being used. And I want to thank Mr. Cardwell and his staff for, for putting them together. Um, our screening procedures and consultation with our parents um, is going well. In addition, we are um, asking our kids the, sque the screening questions and tracking attendance um, through Google Forms when they arrive on campus. So essentially, they're getting asked those questions twice. Um, and our hydration piece is going well as well. Uh, students are bringing their, their water bottles. Um, we do have a plan in place with eight ounce uh, bottles of water if they run out. Um, where we can put that, we can hand them out to our students. Um, they're small, they can drink them very fast. We wanted to eliminate the 16 ounce bottles or the 12 ounce bottles where they drink them, they put them down and now they don't know which one's theirs. Um, so our optional pre-practices are, are running smooth as, at this point. Um, go to the next slide, please. So one of the things um, that we wanted to do to align our health and safety plan for athletics and marching band with our school reopening plan is add uh, handheld thermometers. Um, in addition to our current screening procedures in consultation with our students, parents, and daily check-ins, um, we would like to add the daily uh, handheld thermometer checks. Um, I talked to our coaches about this. They have no problem. It's an easy procedure. We're checking our students and now and asking them the questions. So this is just one more step. Um, and an added layer to help limit the risks uh, within our preseason workouts and, and moving forward. Um, these thermometer readings would occur immediately when they get out of the car and then they walk up to the hand sanitizer station where the coach checks them in. Um, so you know, with board approval, we would like to add those thermometer readings to align with our school reopening plan as well. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, over the last 14 days, there has been many changes at the state and local levels as it pertains to athletics. Um, the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association, which governs all interscholastic athletics in Pennsylvania, um, came out with a statement on uh, July 29th that allowed schools to move forward with a, a regular hybrid or alternative start date. Um, they also says this is not a one size fits all model, so school districts have the opportunity to, to, to make changes and leagues have the opportunity to make changes as they see fit. Um, it also stated that based on the current known information, the Sports Medicine Advisory Committee uh, believe that with strict adherence to our school's um, adopted plans, that we would be able to provide a safe environment for participation in interscholastic athletics. So this came to us on Wednesday, I believe, um, you know, and all of a sudden schools now have the opportunity to, to potentially change some of the, the regular plans that were out there based on previous seasons. Um, in addition, on 7.30, the PIAA put out a return to competition guidance on individual sport considerations. Um, essentially, they were breaking down what spectators would look like, what media would look like. Um, and then they broke certain, certain um, regulations regarding extended timeouts. Um, all students would have the opportunity to wear gloves and masks at all times. Um, hydration plans, what pre and post game um, conferences and meetings would look like the elimination of shaking hands at the end of competitions or coming together, what official score tables look like. Sometimes score tables have multiple people. Um, they basically were specific in the sense of who should be on that table, when and where. And then uh, also the extension of team areas, um, their benches, so to speak, where they're during competition to extend those sidelines. Um, so that happened on 7.30. Um, so we, we met as a league. Um, with all the schools reopening plans that we're currently going on and the focus on academics, um, 
some of the school's discussions on participation in extracurricular activities um, and, and aligning with what District 1 was doing. And PIAA is made up of 12 districts. District 1 is one of them. That's what Potts Grove is in. The Pioneer Athletic Conference is made up of 12 teams. That, that's what we are a member of. So we decided with everything going on, the importance on academics, we were going to take a pause to a new start date of 9-7 so we can continue to evaluate the landscape within our league, the, vet, the landscape within District 1, um, learn as much information as we could so we could continue to meet as athletic directors and with our principals um, to discuss the, the future of athletics. That came out at 12 o'clock on Thursday, 8-6, 12 p.m. Probably less than 10 minutes later, the Governor Wolf came out with an announcement about 12-10 which said the following, the administration strongly recommends that pre-K to 12 sports be postponed until at least January 1, 2021. The administration is providing this strong recommendation and not an order or a mandate, as with deciding whether students should return to in-person classes, remote learning, or a blend of the two this fall. School administrations and locally elected school boards should make a decision on sports. So this came out at 1210. Um, this created a lot of stir within um, the state and within PIAA because they did not expect it. Um, and then on Friday, the PIAA came out with a press release in response to the governor's new guidance for a two-week pause and a reevaluation on August 21st. Um, they are going to continue to work with the governor and his staff um, to reevaluate a decision on 821. So obviously, in those 14 days, they're, they're, the roller coaster continued, and um, that is where we currently are uh, regarding the state of sports and in the PIAA. Um, so that's where we are right now. I'd like to turn it back over to the board and, and Dr. Shirk. Steve, if I, if I may weigh in, just uh, uh, I was um, wanted to just have you also mention the uh, the guidelines from the uh, Pioneer Athletic Conference, and if Dr. Ziegler wants to weigh in as well, because he's our he's our president. Uh, you know, so as part of, part of our discussion and part of our recommendation with these pieces. Um, uh, also funnel back to our to our leg. Uh, would would either um, yourself or uh, Mr. Lorenzo or or Dr. Ziegler, obviously being the president, weighing in on on that piece. Thank you, Dr. Shirk. I, I can jump in. This is Bill Ziegler, the principal of the high school. So um, the Pioneer Athletic Conference um, Board of Directors met last week, and they voted to uh, delay the season. Uh, as we all know, the delay the season was to begin uh, this coming week. And uh, what the, the PAC decided was that many schools were still deciding whether or not they were going to, you know, whether they were going to go virtual or even hybrid or, or what their learning was going to look like, let alone whether they were going to participate in sports. So to provide the Pioneer Athletic Conference more time to assess the landscape, uh, they decided to delay the season to have practices begin on September 7th and athletic contests begin on September 25th. This would allow that window that students need for heat acclimation and practices and the different timelines for that. This would hold all athletic contests, uh, regardless of the type of sport, until September 25th when they would begin. Uh, and that, that was voted on, I think it was last Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, shortly then the next day or two, uh, obviously the PIAA and the governor came out with their decisions. But as of this point, the uh, Pioneer Athletic Conference has decided to delay the start of the fall season. Anything else there, Mr. Hansbach? Yeah, and I just uh, that is for all sports. So on nine seven, uh, right now that would would be when heat acclimation would start. Uh, every fall sport would start on nine seven, um, and you need fifteen competition dates, or fifteen practice dates prior to the first competition date. So that's why we have a nine seven first practice date and a nine twenty five competition date within the league. So uh, so as of tonight, that th this is our recommendation to the board that we we follow the. Uh, our league, our Pine Athletic Conference, um, um, mandatory pause, if you will, and our new start date will be 9-7 with the potential of a first competition date on 9-25. Is that correct? That is correct, Dr. Shirk. Yep. Thank you both for that. Um, would the board like uh, any discussions on, on these pieces uh, with our uh, current panelists? Trying not to go first. Uh, 
but I don't want us to move on uh, without some discussion. Um, it seems to me, it sounds like the safety precautions uh, are in place, um, which was my reason for voting no to opening uh, hybrid as an option. Uh, I am thankful that the thermometers uh, are in place and I know the san required sanitation uh, things are there. And for the practices, I know you're able to, to keep distant, but as we're talking about um, certain sports, you know, competition starting, we're not going to be able, obviously, to have that uh, social distancing in place. Uh, it seems to me we need to uh, look at each uh, sport individually and decide if it can uh, safely occur with social distancing in mind. Uh, that's my thought and my suggestion. I wanted to ask Dr. Ziegler if there had been any discussions with regard to uh, taking it a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, so for example, um, looking at golf, cross-country sports, pretty much each sport individually, so that it's not um, maybe one or two sports that kind of gets the entire plan uh, voted down, per se. So I was just wondering how those discussions were going with regard to that among the PAC. Yes, so the PAC uh, did discuss that. Uh, they decided to continue in full with all sports and wait rather than uh, select and choose which sport, you know, such as maybe golf or tennis, that could be social distance more. So they decided to uh, hold all sports collectively together. However, I can tell you this, the Pioneer Athletic Conference is meeting regularly. Uh, the board is meeting regularly to review things such as that and how we can work to maintain sports for students because we know how important they are in the lives of students. Thank you. When do you need a decision by us by? I, I would like to, uh, not, not, not tonight, obviously. I, I would just like, I would like us to, um, to follow the recommendations. Uh, that would be my recommendation to the board to follow the recommendations of the of the Pioneer Athletic Conference with those with those two dates in mind, and uh, uh, continue on the path that we have been at this point uh, with following our athletic and band safety plan, and um, you know basically just see see what shakes out um, you know through the through the state and the, and the state athletic association. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate. That's why, that's why, I mean, you know, I have some thoughts of my own personally, but I, I don't want to speculate. And I, I hope that, um, I hope that, uh, you know, we can reach decisions that can benefit uh, our student athletes, you know, in the next, next couple weeks. Um, I'd like to just chime in a little bit. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Stephen, his, all his efforts in, um, you know, working with Dr. Ziegler on, always trying to be active and keep our kids active in a positive way um, and carry on the best we can. Um, I do believe our students need to be active. Um, that's one of my biggest concerns, but, um, but I would be, I would really go with the plan that's the rec recommend, recommended from the PAC and, um, and look at each individual sport, um, like de definitely maybe tennis, uh, golf, cross country, um, not sure how we would tackle football. Soccer is the same. Uh, field hockey, I'm not so sure, but um, but I would follow the guidelines. But um, most important, thank you for all your efforts for our kids. So just to clarify, then there's not going to be any competition. We'll be able to continue to social distance for the next two weeks and then give guidance at the next board meeting, correct? That is correct, but I will, I will just have Dr. Ziegler and Mr. Ansbach just back me up on that. Yeah, that is correct, uh, Dr. Shirk. You're correct with that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll continue our optional pre-practices as they are on, you know, we're kind of in a hybrid phase one, phase two right now. Um, social distancing is in, in place. Um, balls have not been shared. Um, when we get into a full phase two, we may share the balls, but the social distancing component will still be, be there.
Okay, does anybody else have any other questions or any comments they'd like to make at this time? All right, thank you gentlemen very much for that update. Appreciate that. Yeah, again, uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, to Dr. Ziegler and Mr. Ansbach and uh, Mr. Lorenzo for, uh, uh, you know, keeping that in the forefront uh, of, their, of their work. Uh, also the board for listening to those pieces. Uh, the, last, the last discussion item I have tonight is the Western Montgomery Career and Technical Center. Um, I, obviously, we all know that uh, the JOC includes Spring Ford, Upper Perk, and Potts Grove. Uh, the JOC uh, met on uh, Monday night yesterday, and I just wanted to basically, uh, uh, if you haven't found this out, I wanted to read a press release from uh, uh, Mr. Moritzen, uh, the, the administrative director, uh, at the meeting of the Joint Operation Com uh, Committee, Western Center on August 10th, the JOC approved reopening the uh, technical center in a face-to-face -face learning environment. The Western Montgomery Career and Technical Center administration and staff had worked tirelessly over the past few months to, to put a plan in place that will provide a safe return for both staff and students. Our goal will not change. It will not waver. We will continuously work to ensure the students are able to get the education they need so dearly and the environment that stays for everyone. Uh, within the health and safety plan, we have outlined the processes we will make sure that students and staff follow to establish protocols designed in part with the guidance of the Montgomery County uh, Board of, um, of Health and the Centers of Disease Control and the Western Montgomery Pandemic Team. We are confident that we work together as a community. We can operate in a safe manner. Updates and information will be forthcoming on our website, social media, and school messenger. And I know Mr. Moritzen has, has sent out information today, but I just want to, as the, uh, as the superintendent of record for the Montgomery County um, Technical Center, I've worked with Mr. Moritzen for the last four months regarding his reopening plan. And I must say, because of the size of the building, the size of the classrooms and labs, he could present a, a, a plan that uh, allowed six feet or more of social distancing He's also putting, a, uh, as, as we all have, uh, a mass, you know, following the mass mandate, and all, and all, obviously the, uh, the the personal hygiene and community hygiene model in place. When I say community, it's community responsibility amongst the students and staff down there uh, to create a, a safe environment for everybody who partakes in that educational piece. So uh, for us, uh, this will allow our students. Uh, who are currently enrolled at the Western Center, if they choose to, they will uh, be able to follow their normal AM or PM schedule. Uh, I know Dr. Obviously, Dr. Ziegler just got this information late last night, so there will, there, there will be some, you know, some some scheduling pieces. Well, we have to work out, but the, generally speaking, if if you are an AM uh, Western student, you will go down to the Western Center in the AM, and then you'll come be transported back uh, to Pottsgrove High School, and then you will uh, uh, need to get a ride from there at this point, uh, and um, you will then be able to go home in the afternoon and start your, your PM classes, and then the same will be true for the PM tech students. Uh, they would have their virtual academic classes in the morning, and then they would be transported down uh, in the afternoon uh, for their for their specific trades and tasks. So, information regarding transportation. Uh, I know Mr. Moritzen is getting uh, like surveys out, so we know how many students need to be transported and how many buses we would need. Uh, I know he's even opening up uh, the ability for our students to drive. We're trying to make this piece uh, as as uh, accommodating in a way that's just the right thing to do at this with this point in time. So. I wanted to share that good news, um, you know, with our board, and I want to thank, uh, you know, our board members who participated last night in that that meeting, and uh, I think it's a step in the right direction for us. And some of you might be saying, well, what about what about us? What about Pottsgrove School District? Um, you know, for us at this point in time, based on based on the Department of Health numbers that we have, we don't have the physical space to make this model work. Um, we do have it in the hybrid, and when we get to that point, we will open under the hybrid and obviously work our way to green, but that is the difference. Uh, they have the 
the physical space in their labs and in their classrooms to handle an AM PM schedule. They also have the ability to uh, have transitions, very little transitions when they enter the building. There will be no lunch served. So um, their plan, their health and safety plan was a solid plan. It covered uh, every, every uh, item that you could think of to create a safe, safe environment for our students and the students of the Spring Ford School District, as well as the Upper Perkiom uh, School District as well. So I share that information uh, with you as a board, the rest of the board, and I also share that information with the community. Dr. Shirk, if I could just piggyback on that. Um, I would just like uh, everybody to know that the, to, if you want to review the health and safety plan, it's available on the Western Center's website, and that's westerncenter.org. So does anybody on the board have any questions on this at this time? Just a couple of questions first. Sure. Uh, Dr. Shirk, I was on the Zoom meeting last night listening in, and there was a couple of things I, I heard. So the first question I had was, I understand that the Western Center borrowed some desks from our schools and from Springford schools to allow that six foot distancing. Uh, are those going to be transferred back to us when we go to hybrid or are they extra desks we did not need? They were extra, Mr. Leach, from, right. from, from both schools. Second thing, all right, I also saw on their, the health plan that they had purchased 36 of these Dyson air purifiers. So two questions I have on those. Why would be, if there was something that was beneficial to make the air purified, in essence, as they said, the droplets would go to the ground quicker and such like that, it'd be better for the students. Why were they not on our list to possibly purchase through the CARES Act? Or also, if they only work for 400 square feet, which is what they say they list at, how could they fill a building that's over 100,000 square feet and some of the rooms, as people were discussing, as in 12,000 square feet for just a room, and most rooms at least over 2,000, with just 36 of these? All, all great uh, questions, Mr. Leach, and I don't, I don't have the specific answers, and Mr. Moritzen would, would be able to tell you that in a, in a, in a heartbeat, uh, what his, uh, you know, what the, 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 the uh, that method was and why he chose that that piece. I know he had uh, his HVAC uh, team, you know, an HVAC team come in uh, to check his, um, you know, the ventilation pieces. So I don't, I don't want to speculate on his behalf why, why he did that, but uh, we can, we can surely, we can surely get that answer. And I'm just going to, um, you know, ask, um, yeah, uh, Mrs. Bicker just to write that down so we can make sure that we can get him to, uh, to weigh in on that, that piece and, and the why. I know Mr. Cardwell's with us tonight. I don't. I don't know if he's prepared to to to, to uh, jump in on that. If you're not, Mr. Cardwell, feel you don't have to. But um, I, uh, you know, to answer his question, that's fine. If not, we can find out more information, Mr. Leach, and get back to you in a timely fashion. Okay. Next just one, one more thing, if I could just add real quick. Um, it was Train who came in and inspected it. And all the uh, upgrades we had to do were all, they all went underneath a, uh, a CARES, Air, CARES Act grant. That's how we well, paid for it. I understand they're on the CARES Act, so I'm just trying yeah. to figure out how 36, 400 square foot yeah. purifiers are going to fit in a building that's over 100 square, 100,000 square feet. And if they're going to do that, then why aren't we considering something like that? Um, Next question I had was in regards to uh, the teachers there. Now, with their plan, as was stated last night, as you generally don't have a choice. You either are going to go to the school or you're not. As in, they're not giving the, pair, the students that have an issue with going to go virtual. Uh, there will be, as, he, as again, I believe it was Chris who said, we'll go case by case, but we want to see medical issues with the students we expect them to be in the school I'm trying to figure out as into what's going to happen when you had according to their side as in one of the areas we had mentioned is a difficulty with teachers possibly 
using some of the CARES Act and not being able to fill some of the classes. And they had 11 particular teachers that said they did not want to come back. And those teachers have to be more uh, difficult to find substitutes for than some of our teachers in maybe an elementary school teacher is probably an easier to find a, an English elementary school teacher for substitute than it is to find a diesel tech student. So I'm trying to figure out how that's going to play out. Okay, um, good question. I'm gonna to try to, uh, it was a long question, Mr. Leach, so I'm gonna to try to break it down for you. Uh, as far as the staffing goes, um, you know, their staff will follow, would follow the same procedures as ours was when we were preparing to open hybrid. Um, you know, it was a process where every teacher who had a, a health concern had to go through a, a checklist, a COVID checklist. So that, that'll be the first step that, that um, the Western Center teachers who uh, have any health related issues uh, will have to go through that particular checklist uh, and do that with their administration. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing. Uh, we don't know exactly. The numbers were really just thrown around last night. I think in the next week or so, we'll have a more accurate count of how many teachers um, are on board to teach and how many teachers aren't. Uh, but one of the things that we talked about and I talked about with Mr. Moritzen in conversation is that if, if we had 19 shops, so if we have 19 shops and 15 shops can open because the teachers are available to teach, then we'll open 15 shops. The four shops uh, who, that aren't open, what we will do there is we will, we will have a virtual setup and an and a, and a educational component uh, that's strictly a theory component, and then eventually work our way back to some hands-on pieces as we move forward. Uh, so uh, uh, Mr. Moritzen has thought about that, those pieces. He's thought about his staff. Um, and We'll, we'll just wait and see, but we feel that, that it's important that we, we that the teachers who are available and the students who are available who want that technical spot because the, these students um, and their training, they are our essential workers that we're gonna need in the, in the years to come. So we felt that whatever piece we could give them, whatever educational component of hands-on uh, will be worth everybody's while. So, that's that's it that's really the to, as of today and he'll be reaching out to the to the to the faculty this week to find out who those people are and uh, who 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 might need assistance and we're going to do the same thing with the students who feel uncomfortable coming back so um uh, that's something that uh will be uh will be brought hopefully that answered i hope i covered everything if i didn't please please I got, more but then obviously i want to yield the floor to everybody else uh, al could i answer a question or comment something for you sure um you had asked about the dice and and why we didn't use them uh while you and dr shirk were speaking i quickly went through the dyson site doing searches for covid19 and they have a few spots where they talk about covid19 but they don't actually mention anything about like in the title of covid19 but there is no information on their site at all about COVID-19 or that their equipment helps in any way with COVID-19. I so, can't find one spot on quite a few, I mean, their entire site. I did, did a quick, you know, meta search through it and everything, and there's nothing there on it for, mm -hmm. you know, they, I don't know. they mention it in a title, but they don't say it helps COVID um, for clearing COVID-19. They'll talk about how um, COVID-19 is in the air and look at these different things that we can do, but they don't actually say it, takes care of clearing out any virus particles in the air. So, Thank you. Thank so you. it might have been an assumption on somebody's part at the Western Center that they would help. But according to the Dyson site, it doesn't say that they will help it for that. So, okay. um, And like I said, I, I, don't, I want to leave, yield the floor to other questions and such like that. But I had another question in regards to um, the overall of the PPE and such like that. It was mentioned when, and remember, I voted for hybrid. I want the kids at the Western Center. I want the kids at our school. I want the kids in school. But when we were discussing our, our version of going to hybrid, one of the deciding factors was the comfortability of getting the PPE listed for our school. Now, I understand the administrators had their confidence in it and getting it, 
Um, but some board members were not confident that we would have in time. So I'm trying to figure out why the same, not the same board members, but why our representatives felt that the PPE or at the Western Center will be there in time if ours isn't. Like, how is theirs different than ours? Al, if I can jump in since I am on the JOC and I was part of the um, meeting last night, um, I believe that Chris said they already had it. If I'm incorrect, then obviously correct me. Oh, I don't know. I'm if, just if he, if they don't already have it, um, then that's a problem. I personally did not vote to open the Western Center because I felt that there were too many holes in the plan. One of them being that um, I didn't feel the teachers had been um, consulted. That was the first that they were hearing that um, 11 teachers had not, that had stated that they were not comfortable coming back. I worry that there will be staffing problems. Um, I worry that social distancing will not be able to be followed through with because of um, instruction pra instructional practices when you're dealing with things like, you know, engines and um, cosmetology and culinary skills, you know, that's really hard to teach them from six feet apart. Um, and now that when you brought up the Dyson issues, um, you know, that now is a concern too, because I know that there's um, classrooms in that building that have no windows. They have no ventilation to the outside. So, you know, I have a lot of concerns. You know, I, I was one of nine. There were two of us that voted against. Um, you know, one of my other reasons was that if, if we're not opening our own school hybrid, then, you know, I, I feel like I'm um, being somewhat of a hypocrite to say, oh, well, we can't open our school, but we can open that school. And I understand it's a different situation. I get it. But um, to me, it's just, you know, I've got to stick to um, my original vote on that. So just so you know, that that's what, those were my feelings on. It. But again, I'm one of nine. Thank you. Uh, I think you'll let, let everybody else discuss their thoughts and questions. Well, as I often do when, when people aren't volunteering to speak, I go around and call on you. So uh, we'll start with Mr. Strunk. You don't have to say anything. You can say no comment. That's fine. But, you know, just let me know that you don't have anything to say. Mr. Strunk, you're on mute. We'll move on to Tina and we'll come back to Mr. Strunk. Yeah, I am all for the students returning to the Western Center. Thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, Dr. Nipper. I support the students going to the Western Center. It's a very different situation than we have in our buildings. And I think they're mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Mr. Parker. My questions were answered, thank you. Okay. Mr. Levick. 
I don't have enough information to say whether it was a good RD or not. I know their situation is different, but I don't know the full extent of the measures that they took, how the teachers feel, I mean, what conditions are being, what's, what's being done there. So I really would just be guessing at whether I thought it was safe or not, so. Okay, fair enough. So with that, we come to the top of the order. Um, Ms. Grimm, you've given your thoughts. Do you have any concluding uh -huh. thoughts? Um, no, I, I think it was the right decision. I feel comfortable with the decision. Um, you know, we don't we don't have the volume that we have here. I know we won't be um, having any lunches, so we have that space to uh, utilize for some of the teachers that uh, do not have windows. Uh, some of the garage doors can be open. I know they ordered um, those big massive fans. Every teacher will have a temperature device. Um, every student will be giving a mask and um, they're actually gonna make them with the Western Center logo and they'll have a backup pair in the uh, Ziploc baggie. Uh, I think the teachers were issued, along with Shields, they were issued three masks. And I believe it's Wednesday is when it's gonna be uh, a total clean day, you know, total like overall day. But, um, but I, I just feel that uh, it was the right decision. Okay. Patty, I have a question for you, Patty. Are the masks, are they required to wear the masks there or is it going to be only under certain sets of circumstances? Um, I believe they're required, but they're going to have what they call mask breaks. So the kids can like go outside and take a breath. Um, like again, I think okay. that'll be individual for each class. Okay, so like in the classroom themselves, even if they are set to six, seated six, fate apart, we, um, they would be wearing the mask. It's only under certain circumstances. Certain circumstances, yes. yeah. And certain, I think they're- but otherwise- they're Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, actually, I think there was somebody else starting to say something. Oh, okay, about me, okay. So. Oh, and I do know they'll be- No, going I just was- Entering the school in one, <laughs> one way. You know, like if they're <laughs> gonna limit it for the door opening. Okay. So. Sorry, Jim, you got Okay, to... now I was just curious if, yeah, I was just curious if they were wearing them in the classrooms, um, even if six feet apart, or if they were taking them off in the classroom, but you think they are wearing them in the classroom? They are, but like some of the, some of the, like where the diesel is and the automotive, I mean, they're huge, huge rooms. And um, there may be times when the kids might take them off. I'm not sure like for each, what the rules are for each classroom, um, but I could find that out. Okay, thank you. I'd be curious. Yeah, I, yeah. that's I a good wait, question. I can, I can weigh in on that for us. Um, okay. One of the, um, the, the students will, will, will wear their mask at all times in the classroom. Uh, that, that was one of the pieces that um, the, uh, the teachers really weighed in heavily on, that if, um, if they had to obviously wear their mask, that they felt it was really uh, pertinent that uh, the students did as well. So, um, they will be wearing their masks full time at the Western Center. Obviously, they're they will be given opportunities to to take the masks off, get fresh air, and as as Mrs. Grimm alluded to, um, you know, uh, classrooms that are well vented with windows. Uh, there's a lot of garage doors for, on different sections that they will be kept open, so the students will have an opportunity to uh, to uh, you know take their mask off and and breathe in some fresh air. But that was one of the that was one of the pieces on their safety plan that they will wear their masks at all times. Okay, thank you very much. Just one more thing, I'm just going over my notes because I'll finish up pretty much my JOC report, but um, every teacher will have a plexiglass um, mounted in front of their desks also for protection. Okay, thank you, Ms. Green. Uh, Ashley, do you have anything that you'd like to say or No, I pretty much said said it all earlier, so I'm good. Yeah, I don't know if I dare come back to Al. <laughs> now, the only thing is, uh, I want to make sure everybody understands, I just was asking questions in regards to make sure that we have taken all the precautions necessary for our students, for the teachers and such like that. As everybody probably knows, I am 100% for our students going to both the Western Center and like we had our school and such like that. I want the kids there. 
so I was just asking questions to make sure that all of the things, quite frankly, I believe our plan was actually stronger than the plan. But it doesn't matter here or there. I just wanted to make sure everything was safe. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Now, Mr. Strunk, we, you thank you. I, I found the mute button. I attended the meeting last night and I was comfortable with the decision. And at the end of the meeting, I found myself asking, why, why do I feel okay there, but uh, not, not as okay with uh, Potts Grove School District? And there were probably three criteria that stood out to me. Two have been talked about, uh, the smaller student body and larger class size. But the one that was the biggest learning for me, I guess, in listening to the meeting was traffic flow, or what I think Dr. Shirk called uh, uh, transition. There is very few times where large groups of students pass each other between classes or, or in the hallway. Uh, so as, as was said, there's no groups of students going to lunches or there's much less movement from class to class to class in transition. And because of that, I just started looking online and saw what other uh, larger school districts are doing with what they call um, cohort kind of models. And that whole quote cohort model is based on this sense of uh, limiting traffic flow or limiting transition as much as you can to try and reduce risk of spread. So for me, what stood out at the meeting and was really a positive and made me walk away feeling comfortable with a why, why there but not here kind of question uh, was a, those first two factors, smaller classroom uh, or larger classroom and, 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 and fewer people. But most importantly, this uh, just not a lot of traffic flow reduced transition. And I think that's an important criteria to even look at as we and, and other districts begin to plan uh, reopening in the hybrid model. Is there a way we can set up uh, the, the, the curriculum, the class day that minimizes uh, transitions? Dr. Shirk. Yeah, I just want to, you know, thank the board for their comments. Um, obviously, um, you know, three of our members were there last night and participated, and uh, I thank them again for their participation and tonight's your, your way in comments. But, um, you know, we will we will uh, you'll be working with Mr. Moritzen, Dr. Ziegler will, uh, and we'll be tying the <clears throat> the pieces together, if you will, and uh, you know, giving those students who who want to be at the Western Center that opportunity and the, the ones who don't obviously giving them, you know, the, the opportunity that they need and until, uh, you know, things, things loosen up some more. So thank you for the board and we'll move on to uh, action items for personnel. Uh, if that's appropriate at this time. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, action items personnel 11.1 to 11.6. We have a motion from Ms. Grimm and a second from Mr. Leach to approve 11.1 .1 through 11.6 on personnel. Does anybody have any questions on any of those items? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So ordered without objection. Thank you very much. Moving on to uh, action item 11.7 furlough and or demotion of employees. The administration is recommending the furlough and or demotion of the enlisted employees effective August 12, 2020. Until such time, the district deems their positions necessary to return to or become full-time in an in-person educational model. The administration is further directed to monitor and evaluate all district positions for the possible furlough or demotion within the district as the district proceeds into the start of the school year for effectiveness and necessity. So moved. Second. Does anybody have any questions or comments?
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Thank you very much. Now that the vote is done, I'd like to say this. At the end of the last board meeting, we all understood that there was going to be impacts to the decision that we made. And this is the first of those. It is not a decision that we take lightly or joyfully. And we hope to bring all of these people back on full time as quickly as we possibly can do. This is something we need to do for the time being to preserve our physical stability going forward for the end of this year. And more importantly, into next year, when we expect there to be more financial problems. So this is an action we have to take right now. And we're very, we're doing it regretfully, but necessarily. We'll move on to the next action. Thank you, Mr. Linger. We're at section 12, action items for business. 12.1, uh, the Pediatric Therapeutic Services. This is a three-year agreement. Can I make a motion to combine 12.1 to 12.4? Second. I have a motion and a second to combine items 12.1 to 12.4 business items. Does anybody have any questions or comments on any of these four items? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So ordered without objection. Moving on, moving on to action items for policies, 13-point run, approval of policies. We're asking the board to approve the policies as submitted. So moved. Second. We have a motion a second to approve the two policies that are before you for uh, uh, as presented. Does anybody have any questions or comments on these two policies? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those no. aye. And we thank you for the work on policies. Moving on to 13.2 and the busing resolution. We're asking the, uh, the board to approve a, a resident student transportation resolution as submitted. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the busing resolution as submitted, as attached. Uh, all those, I'm sorry. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this resolution? Not a question, but Dr. Schur, could you explain this to the public what this actually means? Yes, uh, thank you. I wanted to, uh, actually, I'm going to uh, uh, pass that to our legal legal expert, uh, Mr. Mark Davis, uh, to explain what this uh, resolution means uh, for our community and busing in our community. Mr. Davis? The uh, school code uh, indicates that public uh, transportation for students, and I say public transportation, I'm, I'm talking about uh, school busing is optional with the district. Uh, Potts Grove has done that for some time. Of course, most districts do. Um, there are districts in Pennsylvania that do not. And this resolution indicates um, at this time, uh, Potts Grove is no longer going to uh, provide busing to non-public students. Uh, the school code requires that we provide equal, not equal, the word is identical busing uh, to all. But uh, the net import of this, of course, is we're not busing our students and we're not, we're making a decision now if we pass this resolution not to bus other students that do not go to the Potts Grove schools. So that's the, the bottom line. I think, uh, I think it's readable, it's attached and hopefully um, people can understand that. Very good, thank you very much for that explanation. Are there any other questions or comments on this resolution? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. So ordered without objection.
moving on to uh, the Joint Operating Committee. I know, Mrs. Grimm, you've already uh, spoke to the effect of last night's meeting, but feel free to uh, add anything that uh, might have been missed. Again, you know, it's, it's, I, I just love being at the Western Center. Hopefully, we're going to get in those doors soon enough. I miss the community dinners, all the fun things that the kids do. Um, and I also would like to thank uh, Bob and Ashley for all their hard work and effort in the committee. Um, it's a good, solid committee over there. But I just want to remind everybody that if you want to review the health and safety plan, it's available on the Western Center's website, and that's westerncenter.org. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Swift. Moving down to committee items, uh, the policy committee, which met on May 26th, we're asking the board to accept their minutes as presented, um, as presented, as submitted. So moved. You're hanging out there alone, Betty. Did we need a second? I'll second. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm reading. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve all of the committee meeting minutes. Is that correct, Patty? We, we can, if we can combine, I make a motion that we um, combine 15.1 and 15.2. Second. Okay, 51 and 15 All right, very good. Does anybody have any questions on 51 and 15 too? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed say no. So ordered without objection. Okay, 15.3, the Athletic Co Curricular Community Relations Committee met on June 9th. Uh, we're asking that committee to report out to the board, please. Okay, so for our meeting, I'm kind of excited because um, as I read back through the notes from our meeting, I remembered a presentation that Mr. Onspot gave and it was absolutely beautiful. So I reached out and asked if he would be willing to make that same presentation to everybody because um, it highlights the outreach that our students and staff pull together to do. And it's really what makes Pottsgrove Pottsgrove. And I think it's absolutely what we need right now. Um, so I'm going to hurry through the other notes, and then I'm going to turn it over. Mr. Unspock was very gracious to accept that invitation. Um, I will not do justice to it like he will, so I'm going to hurry through the rest of the notes um, as best as I can. We had the alumni honor roll. It was the first time the district completely partnered with retired teachers groups group and worked with them to present the annual alumni honor roll luncheon. There was also the first year of the Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, we recognized the alumni of Pottsgrove High School who demonstrated dedication, sportsmanship, and success participating in Pottsgrove Athletics and made outstanding contributions during their careers. We gave away uh, in excess of $10,000 within the Education Foundation Teacher Mini Grants. This was the second year in a row for that. The website was upgraded uh, this fall. It says here it's the first upgrade in the past nine years. And something that really also stood out is this is the third time out of the last four years, so three out of four, that Pottsgrove received the PAC Sportsmanship Award. And again, I just, you know, sports are very special to me. It's very special to so many of us. But to be recognized as having good sportsmanship, goes so far beyond the field and it's just something to be very proud of and without further ado mr onspock if you wouldn't mind uh showing that presentation that you did such a great job with in uh, in june okay thank you mr mcintyre glad we were able to present so uh this in our co-curricular committee meeting we highlighted some of the great things that our student athletes and coaches did uh throughout the 2019-20 school year um so i'm going to Briefly recognize them. Our cheerleading and football program donated $500 to the Montgomery County Hero Fund. 
Uh, this is the first year we partnered with this organization and the purpose of this fund was to provide immediate and ongoing relief and services to any law enforcement officer, military personnel, fireman, paramedic, and any first responder or their loved ones as a result of tragedy um, on duty in service of people in Montgomery County. Um, we did this at our uh, military uh, first responder night, um, and we look forward to continuing to do this again. It was a great, great night. Um, we also continued to partner with the Phoenix Hill Cancer Center and their uh, patient assistance fund. Our booster club football cheerleading program, boys soccer, and volleyball were able to uh, raise over $2,500 to this fund. And this has been a tradition that we've been doing now for over nine years. It started with the leadership of Mrs. Patty Grimm. Um, and now we have raised over $10,000 for the assistance fund where money uh, goes to help with medicine and transportation um, and other needs. So um, we're very, we're very thankful that we can continue to do this. Uh, we have our pink out um, night during football games. We also do pink out soccer games, volleyball games, and et cetera. And it's great for our community. It's great for our kids. Um, our cross country team donated over $3,500 to the Trinity Lutheran Meals for the homeless. Um, this is a continued effort by our cross country team. Um, the money donated assisted with warm meals and shelter for people within the greater, greater Pottstown community. Um, our co cross country team raises this money in their annual turkey trot. Um, and they present this truck, this check, after they go for one of their team runs. So it's a, it's a great camaraderie that they have. Um, not sure if we'll have it this year, but the turkey trot is one that I recommend everybody should do. It's a, it's a, it's a great event um, that our, our team hosts. Um, our winner high school athletic programs did their first holiday food drive this year uh, for canned and non-perishable items. And together, uh, they were able to pack over 40 bags of perishable items to be handed out at the God's Kitchen Monday Soup Kitchen um, at, at Coventry Christian uh, Church right there. And, you know, this was a great – we turned it into a, a, a contest, and the, the winner of the contest was able to uh, get a team di dinner provided by me. So it, it was a lot of fun throughout the winter, and I'm glad everybody was able to participate. Um, and lastly, the Pasco football players uh, supported the – Dr. Seuss Read Across America at Lower Elementary. Um, this is something they do every year. Players are broken up in the individual classrooms and they read their favorite Dr. Seuss book to our students. Um, they also donated their time to Green Alley's Recycling. Um, the team and our coaches assisted with unloading and organizing various recyclable items, which included TVs, refrigerators, air conditioner units, and computers. We're so proud of our student athletes for doing this um, and our coaches for continuing to pay it forward in the community. Um, some of these partnerships have been around for a number of years under the leadership of Mr. Dorenzo, and we're thankful that we can continue to do them year after year. Um, so a, a huge thank you to, to everyone involved, and I'm glad, Mrs. McIntyre, that I had the opportunity to present this tonight. Thank you, Mrs. McIntyre. Thank you, uh, Steve, for uh, presenting that uh, information. Mr. Lingren, can we move to new business? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am not going to start tonight, Mr. Lingren. We'll open that up. <laughs> <in the board. laughs> so we'll go to... We'll go to our backup starter then. Mrs. Grimm, do you have anything for us? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Leach. As always, I have something. Oh, first, I want to thank the board and everybody, but I also want to thank Mr. Jay Strunk for his involvement now and joining our board. I want to thank him personally, to everybody as well. Uh, his family was all there. It's going to be a pleasure working with him for the next few years and hopefully many years after that. Thank you, Al. The first thing, though, I would want to ask about is we had approved, I believe, paid for our website revamp. And I understand that was originally scheduled for July. Well, July is come and gone. It's now August. And I want to see where we are with getting our website revamped so we have it set up correctly for the virtual program on August 31st. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Leach. We, we've been working really diligently the last couple of weeks on that piece. And uh, obviously, there was a couple of delays, but uh, 
I know Mr. Uh, Dorenzo and he's had quite a team of, uh, of uh, people working you know, with him during this process throughout the district. And Mr. Dorenzo, if you could just weigh in and update uh, some of the progress that you've made and, and, uh, and future look, look for us. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're right, Mr. Leach. It's been a little bit of a delay, obviously, with everything. Um, but we, one of the biggest pieces was our uh, IT department had to backfill uh, a bunch of information from um, our power school piece, our Schoology piece, our bus transportation, et cetera. Um, there was just a tremendous amount of uh, information that um, had to be transferred to Blackboard, which is our, our website uh, provider. Uh, for the last week and a half, we've had six different trainings uh, that we'll then pass on to our, uh, our webmasters, et cetera. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed our, our school messenger system in the, the last few times has been a little bit different. Um, so that's been kind of a, a, a test and uh, we're working through some of the glitches there. But uh, within the next two weeks, you should see a brand new website and uh, we should be ready for the... Uh, the start of the school year with a, with a whole new look. Um, but it's been, you know, Mr. Bickert's staff has been tremendous uh, with, with, with an amazing amount of information that, and data that had to be transferred uh, through this process. And, uh, and the training has been, you know, quite extensive, but uh, we're looking forward to it. So uh, we're a little bit behind, I think, uh, um, and really, you know, I think everybody's behind, uh, so to speak, with, with a lot of uh, with a lot of different programs. But we're uh, we're going to have a nice website, and uh, we should be up and running uh, very shortly. So you'll see a whole new look. Thank you very much. Uh, second question. I know the answer, but I was just hoping maybe you could just a little expound on this for the public, as into how the computer rollout is going to work for especially our students who maybe be transitioning from the eighth to the ninth, our new school. To attendees, kindergarten, such like that. Um, yeah, be, be glad to. I know we're we're still in that process, but I know I, I think uh, I know Mr. Bicker can weigh in, and uh, I think the you know the eighth, the, the you know the uh, Mr. Boyer uh, and uh, Dr. Ziegler, uh, feel free transition, uh, Mrs. Kohler, uh, just feel free to you know I know I know you're. I know you're you've, you're working on those pieces. Whatever information you can share with the board and the public tonight, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, the ninth grade laptops are ready for distribution. We're working with Dr. Ziegler to um, you know, schedule that date and communicate out to families. Uh, Mr. Boyer has the sixth grade uh, distribution scheduled. And um, we're still working on configuring devices for K2 students. So I'm going to work with uh, K2 principals to get those dates scheduled and communicated out to parents. And uh, we are still waiting for the uh, lower Potts Grove devices to come in. But once they do, we're going to start configuring those. And once again, work with Mrs. Kohler to uh, schedule those distributions. Yeah, very similar, very similar to what Mr. Bickard said. At the high school level, we are actually planning a, a, a pickup night that's fun to sort of meet the teacher, connect with the teacher in ninth grade, connect, or just connect with staff members. We're going to have some cool things going on, but really to get those laptops out, we should have a date in the next day or early next week when that's going to take place to help with the transition for our ninth grade students. I can speak um, for Potts Grove. Um, we're, as Mr. Baker said, we're waiting for ours to arrive. Um, but the teachers and I are also working together to put um, bundles with the curriculum materials for the students as well. So workbooks, textbooks, um, some supplies, things that the students will need at home. For the online learning piece, we're working on all of that. And uh, we're also planning to do some back meet the teacher kinds of fun things as well. Um, so, uh, we're pretty much all kind of in the same, in the same line right now. I don't have dates right now because again, we're waiting for our devices. Yeah. Thank, thanks. I'm going to jump in on real quick here and just, to emphasize, I want to, Mrs. Kohler's comments about bundles of, of, of books and, uh, packets, things, uh, workbooks, they were items, those are items we, we could not use last spring. Uh, with our ELA and our math curriculum, especially. So 
that push that puts us at a in a much much better spot and and, and Mrs. Kohler, um, you know maybe you want to just wait. I mean I know that that was huge for your team and your your building that you could these these items could be in the hands of the students because we didn't have that advantage last year. We had to pack up and get out. So I think that's something that uh, those bundles will be much appreciated. It'll help the families out and the, as the families and our teachers and the whole educational process at the, at the three, five building as well as K2. So uh, I don't know if, you know, feel free to, to just jump in. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right, Dr. Shirk. Um, What's, what, what'll be really great about this too is the kids will have this, um, these materials at home and it will really help us with the transition back when we can come back into the building too. Um, and we, um, our curriculum teams have been working with, I'm so sorry, our curriculum teams have been working all summer with um, Mr. Voris and us to, um, to plan accordingly with, with the kids having all these materials and everything um, at the K to five level. So. Um, we should be we should be in a really good position this this fall for all of our students. Right. Thank you. Um, at the middle school, we have um, August nineteenth is going to be our sixth grade drive by with all of the sixth grade staff. We're going to hand out um, as many iPads as we can. We're also going to distribute a um, a technology infographic sheet, which will dictate all the sign in and a lot of the instructions that the kids will need and then we're gonna review it at the scheduled welcome night with sixth grade so you know and then anybody that doesn't isn't able to pick up their ipad we're gonna try to schedule that through the first week um of school so you know that a lot of that information went out we've been communicating with parents now moving forward thank you mr boyer Nothing else for me. Love your cat, Terry. Yeah, sorry. She she just has to put her two cents in. I'm so sorry. No, that was great. I loved it. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Uh, Mr. Parker, do you have anything? Good, thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Dr. Nipper, do you have anything? Uh... Just a quick question. Uh, we're talking about passing out iPads. If some of the faculty have their own computers and if they want to use their computers, can they use them? Um, Mr. Bickett, I know you're anxiously awaiting to answer Dr. Nippert on that one, so feel free. Uh, certainly, Dr. Nippert, they, they can definitely use their, their own computers and, and devices. However, um, staff is provided a district issued device um, and all staff members currently do have one and we're, we're working towards replacing those as well. They were purchased with the uh, new budget and uh, they did come in and we are configuring them. So they, they will get out at some point this, this school year as well, but they do all have devices at the uh, faculty level. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but thank you. Okay. Now at this stage, we have uh, Tina, Mr. Lapik, and Ashley. Uh, do any of those, any of you have any questions, comments that you'd like to have, any new business that you'd like to bring up? A comment. I have to say, I appreciate that we have so many constituents tuning into our meetings. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, so that's why, you know, of course, people are going to tune in. Um, but I like that we are interacting with one another and that they can feel heard right on the spot. And it's something we lose when we are in the building um, and we don't get much of a turnout. People are working, they're on the way back home, they're tending to their households. So I have enjoyed, I'd like to be in person, but I've enjoyed this forum because it helps us stay more connected to one another. That was my comment. Thank you. Sure. Jim or Ashley? Yeah, um, I just wanted to jump in. I've been uh, looking over the, the Q&A. There's still some questions on there that um, can be answered by whoever. There was also someone on there who said that they had asked two questions at a previous meeting and they hadn't been answered. I don't know if you guys still have access to those questions. Um, 
but there's a few. I mean, some of them are just comments, so they don't obviously need to be answered, but there are a few questions on there that I'm not able to answer, um, such as like what's going on with uh, ROTC, which I would assume is not going to be happening due to the uh, both Pottstown and Pottstown being virtual, but there's a couple others on there. So if you guys can just sort of take a look and, and um, make sure we get to those. And um, other than that, you know, just thanks to everybody. This has been really trying times for everybody involved. I know I'm about zoomed out at this point. Um, but, you know, just thank you for everyone's involvement, patience, understanding. Um, you know, this is really hard on everybody. So uh, we just appreciate everybody's support. And, um, and I was just informed, oh, sorry, somebody's speeding up my road. Um, I was just informed that there's a meteor shower tonight. So maybe we can all go outside and see a few, uh, few meteors. <laughs> can I, just, uh, go can I uh, add to what Ashley was saying? My understanding is ROTC will be done virtually. Dr. Ziegler, do you, uh, is that correct? Yeah, everything I've been told, uh, junior ROTC will be doing the virtual component similar to Potsdam. Um, we, I actually put out a call to them uh, I'm waiting to hear back, but everything I understand is that they'll be doing the virtual model also. Okay. Try once again, Jim. I eventually get to me. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> sure. Mr. Shunk is our newest member. We'd like to give you the, uh, to the honor, sir. It's just a thank you to the members of the board for welcoming me. I've also received uh, a few messages from members of the community who have known me, uh, congratulating me, and I appreciate that. And I am ready to get on with the work of the board. Thank you. Okay. Last time on new business, um, last Tuesday we took a vote. Uh, we're probably, you know, I've been on as president of the board for just a little while, um, but it was on the subject of whether to open up for the hybrid or in the virtual mode. And um, it was the most critical vote that we've taken since I was president. And um, it went one way and my vote went the other. And that in, its, in and of itself is not a problem. Um, I, I, those of you who know me know that I served many, 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 many years in the minority in my, in my service before. I don't mind losing votes, but um, I, this one is different um, only because I am sensitive about the leadership of the board and I wanna make sure that uh, if there's a, a view of how we need to go forward on this, from here that if there's a different desire, different way that the board needs to be led, that folks want to do that, um, have the freedom to do that, have the freedom to choose. Uh, we do not live in a parliamentary system. There's no such thing in the United States as a vote of no confidence. Um, but even so, under the school code, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mr. Davis, uh, in order for or a, a motion for a vote for the president can be taken at any time at any meeting. In it's regular order. It's at the word pleasure. It's at the word pleasure. So, with that being the case, um, I would entertain a motion for uh, a new president of the board if anybody cares to make that motion. I move that. Uh this option be closed. I'm not sure, Mark, uh, what the parliamentary maneuver is here. I'd second that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Uh, it was motion to table. Oh, okay. Well, then- uh, I mean, I'm not tabling, I, I just don't want it to happen. Well, then, it, <laughs> then there's no motion that will die for lack of uh, initiative, I mean. Okay, we all we all sit here and filibuster in silence. That is correct. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I just coined a new parliamentary term. Uh, <laughs> well, 
Well, Thank nobody you. Wants. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Lindgren and I spoke about this privately. You know my view, and my view is this is not something that should happen. Thank you. I, uh, as Dr. Nippert said, I did make the other members of the board aware that I was going to be doing this so that if there was a desire on the part of the other members of the board to look for new leadership, then that was certainly their option. They could pursue it tonight. I didn't want, uh, I don't like surprises. I didn't want anybody on the board to be surprised. So if there was a different choice that I would be aware of that and fully informed, they could make that, uh, that decision made to them tonight. Um, if there is no motion and there is no second, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. No second. 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 All, right. second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. 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 Aye. Thank you